I've been thinking through how I could preach the truth this Christmas, the truth about Christmas. You know, whenever Christmas time comes around, then of course we have the malls, the schools, the, the culture, the Archie's cards, Facebook and everybody. And they're all promoting Santa Claus, the holidays, um, what else? The Christmas tree and reindeers and things like that. Now, what I've seen a lot of us do in the past is hammer that, you know. We go hammers and tongs on, no, it's not Christmas. This is the real meaning of Christmas. But, you know, take away the Christmas tree. And you, you, get, you get so wrapped up in just those matters of what Christmas is not rather than what Christmas is. In fact, in order to know a fake note uh, bill currency, what you really need to be familiar is with the genuine currency. If you know that, then you don't need to even point out any fakes. So as I think through this Christmas, I have an opportunity one more time to preach the truth that is Christmas. What is it really about and who are we talking about? You don't have to say it's not about Santa. You have to say it is about Jesus. And as we celebrate the Lord Jesus, as we, we lift him up and as we exalt him and as we just tell the truth, speak the truth, sing the truth, de declare the truth, I think that culture will itself be redeemed. Don't speak to the culture now. Pastor, leader, you know, if, you, if you're preparing a sermon, if you're preparing a study, if you're preparing a gospel presentation, don't waste that precious time putting anybody else down or putting any other idea down. Promote the truth. For instance, there is the incarnation of the Lord Jesus, where God became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only Son of God. We understood that he stepped into pain. He stepped into submission. He stepped into humanness, the human experience. He stepped so low that he had to be hidden from Herod so that he does not get killed when he was just a baby. With that kind of vulnerability, the Lord Jesus stepped into his own uh, creation. Now, that's what people need to hear about. They don't need to hear that Santa is not true. They need to hear that Jesus is true. So I'm thinking through my sermon. I'm thinking, how can I present the truth about Christmas by not focusing on anything else, but on Jesus himself? The Lord Jesus was given. He was the son that was given. For unto us a son is born, a sign shall be given, a son is given, he shall be called, etc, etc, etc. These are the things that we need to promote. And as we promote that, we will give people an option. And they suddenly listen to you and they hear you're not talking about Santa, reindeers, Christmas, uh, things like that. Let's go and let's talk about the, the carols. When we sing the carols, because we want to connect with the world, we want to contextualize, we sing blasphemous songs, foolish songs like Jingle Bells and sleigh bells and uh, sleigh deer and, 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 you know, deck the halls. And uh, these are culture songs and there's nothing wrong with those cultures wanting to sing it. But when we Indians put snow on our Christmas tree, we need to really rethink where we're going with this. That's not my point. My point is simply when we choose a carol, the carol needs to be something that, that declares the truth about scripture. It declares the word of God. Like for instance, hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Glorious in excelsis Deo. When you take the story of the nativity, you take the story of the incarnation and you re-deliver the gospel through the carols, that's when your Christmas carols are going to make sense. We will not waste time using all the cultural carols that are there. Even when you think about the Christmas spirit, you know, when you think, just, just uh, let, let's feel Christmassy. Nothing wrong with that. But is the song exalting Jesus or is it, is it exalting the holidays? You, know, you see what I'm saying? So as I plan Christmas, as I plan the ministry impact to Christmas, I want to choose words, themes for my sermon that will 
speak the truth about Christmas and not necessarily try to defunct the lies about Christmas. Okay, when I choose the songs, I want the songs to tell the truth about Christmas. I want the songs to be clear. If a song does not, uh, uh, is not understood immediately, take a moment, pastor, take a moment, worship leader, to, to kind of just explain this song means this, glorious in excelsis Deo. Well, that's 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 Latin. Okay, you want you might want to explain that. And for the newcomer, let them know what we're singing about. And uh, you can put it on the screen, something like that. I want us to also engage unbelievers. I want us to engage the unchurched. So are we opening our doors up this Christmas for any and everyone to come? What are we trying to accomplish through our service? The key word is invite. Invite, 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 invite. Invite upper class, invite lower class, invite your language section, invite people who you see can continue to be part of your church. Reach people who are like yourself, not necessarily who are unlike you only. It's great to go into the uh, towns, it's great to go into villages, it's great to go among the poor and do something nice or tell the gospel. But if you're not reaching people who are just like you, you're not gonna grow your church. If you want to grow your church, you're going to reach the people who are just like you. So go out to the people who are just like you in the malls, in the offices and things like that. And invite, 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 invite. Don't preach the gospel on the streets. Don't preach the gospel in a public arena where you have no right to. Come in, bring them to the church and there deliver to them the love of Jesus through the message. So the best way to make a connection with these people and ensure that they stay is to find out what their needs are. So is there a way, pastor, leader, elder, worship leader, ministry leader, home group leader, is, is there a way you could, before the service, after the service, create a conversation with them where you find out what their needs are? Wow, you came to our church for the first time. Lovely to have you. Tell me about your family. Is there anything we can do as a church? Is there anything we can do to serve you? And as you obey that, get into that, act on it, come January and February, you can bring them back as you reach their needs. Many of us, we want them to boom, fall to their knees as they listen to the message and they want, we want them to respond. Probably some will do, but most will not. We need to make a connect to show that the Jesus who left heaven to come down to earth is still reaching people. He's still going into homes. He's still healing diseases. He's still uh, loving people and caring for them. So have a re-engagement strategy where after the service, before the service, in writing, in cards, in some way, you're finding out, is there a way for us to serve you? We are still telling you Jesus came to serve us and he became human. He became flesh and blood. How can we serve you then? All right. So let's be thinking about this and, and, and plan towards this. And as you have any questions or thoughts and you want to discuss this with me, there's an email at the bottom of the screen. Let's talk. Let's ask questions. Let's let's improve the way we impact our our audience let's be sharp let's be fruit, fruitful and, and impacting in in our short delivery and in our services this coming christmas okay i'm praying for you please pray for me